Mara Connect, and who are you? So my name is Christophe Arvizet from the European Space Agency. And who are you? I'm Régis Duchesne. I work on uh, arm research at VMware. And uh, so you were talking about uh, pot potentially finding planets that have life, right? Maybe yeah. not, but yeah. like huge data and stuff. And what kind of questions might you have about that? Well, one question I have for Christophe is yeah. how, you do, how do you guarantee that future generations, say 200 years from now, people yeah. will be able to access your data? Uh, do you store the, the rules, the protocols, you know, the recipe? I mean, every, uh, today our, our life is more and more digital, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not about finding a stone and deci deciphering what's written on it, right? But you need a way to, you know, how do you make sure that uh, a thousand years from now, people will be able to watch MPEG-2 videos? Right, same problem for you. How, how do how do you do that? So that's a very tricky question. I think somebody said, even if uh, we are all in the IT world, so somebody said that the best preservation mechanism is still the book. So if you look at things 1,000 years ago, you can still read the book. Now uh, IT uh, is only like maybe 50 years old, so it's very difficult to forecast further than 50 years, I would say. Uh, in our context, uh, we are quite lucky because both astronomy and the planetary uh, co scientific community have agreed on a common standard. So, I mean, for the astronomers, they are using FITS, and they've been using FITS for the last 30 years, so, which means that even data taken 20 years ago can still be read today with FITS uh, tool. So that's a great thing. On the, the same on the planetary side, so they've used the PDS, which is a format which has been devised by NASA, but we are using it worldwide. So it's called Planetary Data S System. And again, uh, now this, we are going through a, a migration from PDS3 to PDS4, but most of the tools will be able to read uh, both, uh, both cases. So to answer your question, I think we are reasonably safe for the coming 20, 20 years maybe, 30 years. Now to forecast the future beyond that uh, time is too difficult for me to answer. I will need a crystal ball. Well, maybe 200 years from now, you know, they won't care because they can go to space and, you know, get their own data, but they'll still be interested, hist historians in particular, uh, to look at what you knew at the yeah. time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the trick here, and this is what we are doing also with our archives over the last 20 years, is to do regular uh, te technology migration. So uh, it's going to be difficult to maintain a technology which is uh, 30 years old. Uh, but then every, we consider that every five, seven years, we'll have to do a technology sur survey and do a technology migration of our systems to the new technology of them. So what kind of other uh, uh, topics do you think was really fascinating, interesting about it? Uh, to me, what was fascinating in his talk was uh, the ease of use. You can go online and you can actually, you know, as a consumer, right? I know nothing about astronomy. I could go and zoom in on the space and explore space uh, from my armchair, right? That was fantastic. Studying planets. Studying planets, stars. You're looking at galaxies, stars, you know, exploring different wavelengths. Uh, this was new to me. It's like, you know, Google Earth, but for space, essentially. And is this going to be an arm servers? I wonder, what do you think? That was one of my questions, and uh, I'll, I'll let him answer. <laughs> because we had the Lina, uh, Linux on ARM conference. So do you think it would be useful to use potentially, because it's huge data, right? Yeah. Is, I mean, it's growing very fast with new, new spaceships you're sending up, right? Yeah. So um, it's true that most of the applications that we are developing are probably more at a higher uh, level. So we are using uh, uh, Linux um, for all our uh, servers. Um, now, I think it doesn't, I mean, uh, for us, it really doesn't really matter which kind of uh, low level uh, architecture. So as long as we are using a um, Linux based service server, then we are just good. And uh, uh, so the, recently the, the NASA had a live show, they said they found some planets. Yeah. Is this related to the data and the kind of uh, things that ESA is doing? Yes, indeed, in fact, yeah. So I think they, they, they discovered this, uh, tr this uh, set of uh, planets uh, next to TRAPPIST-1. And uh, these are ty the type of things that we can also um, see from our uh, archives. So if you would go to Isa Sky and type that, the name of that planet, and you will be able to see the region of the sky. Not necessarily the same images that uh, NASA made, uh, but some si something similar. And you were talking about uh, the ESA, uh, the collaboration of all the European countries working together yeah. sending spacecrafts into space and now there's one that's going to measure one to two billion stars? Indeed, yeah. So this and that's pretty big, right? Is it yeah. the biggest uh, collection so that's, of stars ever? That's going to be the biggest collection of stars ever by a factor of 10 on the thing. So the, the spacecraft is called Gaia. It was launched in uh, November 2013 and it's doing a survey of the sky. So it's scanning the sky and then it's measuring 
with um, unprecedented accuracy the exact positions on velocity of one point, between one and two billion uh, stars. So it's going to make this massive catalog, uh, which is going to be the biggest catalog ever, with an unprecedented uh, accuracy. So every star and where they are. Exactly, where they are, on their motion as well, their, their velocity, their speed, on their, their, their motion. Not their age, that's a different <coughs> scanner? That's different, yes. Yeah. So there's, a, there's going to be so many stars, and potentially people at home can put a, a software code on there, yeah. on your service. Yes. to run some algorithms to find life, maybe, or to find anything they want. Yeah, so that's, that's the find? idea. So this is not yet in place. So this is, a, this is the proof of concept. This is the, 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 the path where we are going to. So the idea is that you will not be able to download this uh, one billion stars on your uh, database on your laptop because it's going to be too big and too complex to handle. But we want to provide where the archive is located. We want to provide services where people can interact with the, this data, provide them with some computing infrastructure, so some disk infrastructure, so they can run their software and do data mining into that uh, treasure of uh, science. So potentially you need lots of cloud service ser servers to do all this processing and yeah, so this we don't know yet how much it's going to be, be is going to be bought in by the community because it's a different way of working. People today are used to download the data at their place and work at their place. Now this is a paradigm shift. So we'll see if we become victim of our success and if we have uh, too many users, then we have to put too many. Uh, I mean, a lot of computing infrastructure next to the data. And then there's Euclid. Yeah. Uh, what is that going to do? That's even more petabytes of data? Indeed, yes. It's, uh, what is it about? Stars so, also? So Euclid will uh, measure the dark matters in the universe. Uh, that will be launched in 2020, so we still have a few years before that, uh, that happens. And we consider that the dark matters is a very unknown um, type of data. And this is what Euclid is going to look at more in details. So that's going to be lots of petabytes, and then you need the uh, ARM servers, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yes, maybe. Indeed, yes, yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Cool, okay, cool. thanks a lot. Thanks. Sorry.